Hey, I'm Chris Brogan. I wanted to talk to you today about how I stay productive on the road and what does that mean for me and what's involved in it. And I think in the envisioning of this, it was to sort of start as when I got to the hotel room, but I wanted to get you a little bit back into this as well. I travel a lot for business and um, by a lot, a couple of years ago, I did 106 speeches all over the country, all over the world. And 106 speeches means once every couple of three days. So I was booking flights so often that I just felt like a, you know, a rock star without the entourage. So in this process, what I've learned is there's a few things that have changed over my time. Like for instance, uh, the different bags I carry, I, I keep working on improving how I do what I do. So I want to go through some stuff. One is that one of the first points I want to make is that, for instance, if you've got a tablet computer, if you're the kind of person who's traveling out on the road and you've got yourself an iPad or whatever you've got, you know, remember that a lot of the tools that you need, I mean, Podio, Citrix, all these kinds of tools that are out there, a lot of them are now playable or viewable at least on a tablet. And it's a great thing you can do for writing notes. But most people say to me, oh, but it's hard to tap on the glass. That's great. Buy a keyboard. Zag, Z-A-G-G, -G, makes a really good keyboard for this thing. You slides right in. It's Bluetooth. It opens up. It's just like having a laptop without the laptop. I bring this and the laptop. One of the reasons is the incredible battery life of a tablet makes it a little easier for me to get more stuff done. The other is that sometimes I just want to take along something a little more lightweight than even my laptop. And I travel with MacBook Air, so that's pretty darn light. You know, another thing I want to point out as a, as a gadget, if you are going to be doing some conferencing of some kind, a company called Blue, who makes microphones of different kinds, makes this USB microphone called the Blue Tiki. I'm laughing right now because, there we go. Um, I couldn't get this stupid thing to close the other day, and now I'm laughing because I can't get it to open. The Blue Tiki microphone is super tiny. Can you see it okay? It's a USB style, so it slides in USB wise, or still has a USB. It comes with this little cable, so you can make it a little longer. So what this is for is for video conferencing, for recording stuff, you know, whatever you might need to use it for, for audio. So you can pull the, you know, your audio in a lot better. And it's smart. It knows that you're using it for that kind of purpose. It knows that you're probably not trying to be a rock band or not trying to get nature sounds. So it knows to be silent when you're silent. It knows to kind of mute itself. It's a really smart microphone. It's about 60 bucks, I think, called the Blue Tiki. And so this is something kind of fun. It's a fun gadget that I take with me now that, you know, when I'm doing something like a, a go to meeting, I can make sure that my sound is really, really good. So that's one thing in the gadget department. You know, and also in the gadget department, I wanted to show you a couple more things. Um, it's amazing how many people don't travel with their own earbuds or earphones. I think that it's astounding that, you know, you want to allow people's uh, noises to get in your way. Related to that same thing, where did I put them? I wanted to show you, uh, you know, sometimes you travel in places that are a little noisy. These are, um, uh, you know, earplugs, and that's useful. My bag that I'm traveling with for my tech is, is uh, one of these man purses, you know, Kenneth Cole reaction bag, and it's small. It, what's nice is that it, this can fit my 11-inch or 13-inch MacBook Air and an iPad tablet and a charger, um, and then I can put some other stuff in here. The other uh, thing I wanted to show you is, you know, with regards to, oh, that's where it went. When you, when you go European travel, don't forget your European outlet thingies. Uh, I seem to invest a lot of money in these at vending machines at stores. A couple other things. I wanted to show you, uh, you know, make sure you carry a lint brush thing with you. Uh, I also have, if you want to be fancy and you want to bring really good sound with you on the road, I'm really enjoying this Bose SoundLink. So this is really smallish. Uh, I picked it up. It's it's not cheap. It's like a couple hundred bucks, but it blows the heck out of these, you know, mid-range speakers that you're looking to buy. So maybe this is one of those things you save up for. But again, when you're doing conferencing and things like that, you're either going to put in your earbuds or you might want to be on speaker. And so this thing is a really good speaker. It, it does a really good bit of uh, uh, commuting that noise. Um, Make sure you're bringing paper with you. Uh, even though I pointed out the iPad tablets and all that sort of thing, you know, I often carry like a Moleskine or a legal pad or something like that. That's always important as well. I will give you a weird little hack for traveling. And this is like if you want to be uh, gaffer level, bring something like duct tape. 
This is a uh, gorilla tape, so it's it's their version of duct tape. But if you bring this, you can do some cool stuff. One is uh, every time you ever travel and you stop in a hotel room, what happens with the curtains? They don't fully shut, and you get that incredible piercing amount of sunlight. If you don't have to be up before dawn, uh, then why should you? Tape. And there's a million other uses for it. I found that when I started traveling with it, and by the way, I don't travel with this whole roll. I just kind of had this one handy, but I wrap off like about 40, 50 feet and then wrap it up tight and then just stick it in the bag. So that's one I'm pretty sure nobody thought I was going to do. Uh, eye drops, don't forget that kind of stuff. I'll tell you one of my other little hacks is I make sure my toiletry bag is, my to is already packed and I don't bother with the whole get the stuff out of the bathroom and whatnot. I want to talk to you. I think it's onebag.com. It might be onebag.org. They teach you this trick about how to wrap up your clothes. Guys and ladies can do the same sort of thing, but the premise is don't fold your clothes. Put them together and kind of roll them. And what that does is it eliminates wrinkles. It gets a lot fewer wrinkles in your stuff. Now, they give you a little bit more advice than just roll it, but that's that. Um, I used to carry a really cool... Oh, one thing, and then I'll talk about that. Uh... Power is always a problem at airports, so I bring this, I call it my friend maker. It is from Monster Cable, it has three outlets on it, and also a USB outlet. Uh, you can almost always go to an airport and see somebody already has their cell phone somewhere and say, excuse me, do you mind if I slide this in and then re-put your cell phone on it and then I can take some power too? Everyone says yes, it's a friend maker. Um, I want to talk about bags. So I used to carry around this really cool Eagle Creek Talon 22-inch uh, roller bag. And then I went to the Eagle Creek Traverse 22-inch uh, roller bag, and I really liked it. But what I found is this. A lot of times when airplanes get full, which is a lot more often these days because they're trying really hard to save money, that they want to check your bag. And the minute they check your bag, that's 20-something minutes of time you're going to lose at the airport. I'm not a big fan of getting my bag checked. So I've gone back to a duffel. And the duffel I'm going to show you is from a company called Industry Portage. One thing I love is that the inside is blue, so you don't lose all your black technical stuff in it. It's a canvas duffel bag. It's got nice leather handles. It's got a strap like you would expect. And it's the right size for a couple of days travel. It's, it's about 20 something inches. It's the right size for a couple of days travel, but also it's soft, it's compressible. It, even the bottom, which you know looks hard, is not. It's all compressible. What this means for me is that when people have told me they're checking bags, I've, every single time it's happened, they look at my bag and they go, oh. And I say, yeah, it'll go right under the seat. And they go, oh, okay. And I never check a bag anymore. Never, never, never. They could say, this plane is full to the gills. I'll say, this can go under my seat. Done. No problem. So I really recommend it. This is at industryportage.com, but you don't buy a duffel bag. Buy a duffel bag. This is just happens to be a company that I like. Now, when you get to the uh, place, what are the things you need to do? So first off, here's where everyone kind of goes crazy. If you don't like the fact, I mean, if you're paying for your own expenses when you travel, one of the things to do is try to cut those costs down a little bit. One is don't drink the $6 water in the room. The other is if you're working on your fitness and your health, don't eat the $6 M&Ms in the room. Ask the cab guy on the way to the hotel, is there, is there a nearby uh, grocery store? And if not, ask if you can go out of your way just a little bit. And maybe you could pick up another cab from the grocery store. However you're going to do your stuff, get to some place, pick up the stuff you need, and bring it back to the room. That's one. Two, a lot of times people will tell me, well, I put on the TV for noise. No, you don't. You put on the TV because you're just hoping for a distraction. Don't. Another, make sure you make the space your space. When you show up in, an, in a uh, hotel room or whatever, and it's got a little tiny desk and all that sort of stuff, make the space yours. Move the furniture. Take the stuff off the desk that you don't want on the desk. We have this weird thing where we're like, oh, better not touch anything. Make the room your room. They're going to reset it. It doesn't matter to them. The housekeeper looks at, you know, as long as you don't set things on fire, throw them out the window, housekeeper doesn't care. They, you know, it's just a day in the life. They just go, oh, it's a pillow fort. And they go on with their life, you know. You can make a pillow fort. Make the space your own. Then the other thing that's important is don't always, you know, count on the Wi-Fi. If you, if you have a modern smartphone, like an iPhone or something like that, you can set up tethering or buy a MiFi. If you're not really anxious to buy a MiFi because of the cost, look into the process of doing a prepaid MiFi because then you get the benefits, but you don't have to pay for it all the time. You can just sort of pay as you go. There's a lot of ways around worrying about hotel Wi-Fi, but you can't let that be an excuse for why you're not going to get your work done. Um, another thing to think about when you're on the road, 
is uh, I, Kip Bodner and a bunch of guys at South by Southwest a bunch of years ago said ABC, always be charging. The other thing we do a lot crazy when we're traveling is we let our devices get out of charge. Uh, get rude about asking to plug in at places, you know, at like restaurants or the office where you're visiting if you happen to be traveling and working remotely. Uh, charge as much as you can in the hotel room, etc. I guess in sort of closing and sort of wrapping up what you're going to do to get your work done, when we travel, we tend to think that it's off time, but a lot of us are traveling for business and it's not off time. So what's really important to consider doing is make sure you have your schedule be your schedule. Make sure you have your needs and requirements and the things you've got to get done really vividly placed in front of you. One last thing that I forgot, bang, one last thing that I forgot was I carry with me post-it notes that are sort of uh, lined and are sticky and so that I can put my agenda up on my door, on my mirror, wherever I want to put it, somewhere in front of me so I can really stay attuned to the business I need to do and the time I need to get done. That's everything I got for you. My name's Chris Brogan. Thank you so much for your time and I hope this was helpful.